Why is the current race to the moon so intense? This time, humanity is not merely aiming for a brief visit. The objective is to establish a permanent base on the lunar surface. NASA, China, and Russia each have their own strategies to achieve this ambitious goal. In this competition, SpaceX has unveiled a bold and innovative concept designed to build a moon base both quickly and efficiently. If successful, this approach could give the US and NASA a decisive edge over their rivals. So, how does SpaceX intend to construct a base on the moon, and just how remarkable is this solution? Let us explore the details in today's episode of Great SpaceX. In the upcoming race to the moon, there is more at stake than simply sending people there first. The ability to build a base before others will also play a decisive role in determining victory. Whoever establishes a permanent foothold first will gain an immense strategic advantage in exploration, research, and even future resource utilization. NASA is currently well known for its Lunar Gateway Project, an ambitious space station that will orbit the moon and serve as a staging point and serve as a staging point for missions to the lunar surface. This project is being developed in cooperation with multiple international partners. However, despite its vision, the Lunar Gateway faces significant challenges related to cost, engineering complexity, and compatibility among the various systems contributed by different countries. In addition to the Gateway, NASA has also plans for a surface installation called Artemis Base Camp. This base will be built on Earth, transported in sections aboard rockets, and then assembled on the moon's surface. On the other side of the competition, China has partnered with Russia and other nations to pursue their own lunar ambition, the International Lunar Research Station, or ILRS. Their strategy focuses on using in-situ resource utilization, which means they aim to construct their base directly on the moon using lunar materials. They proposed methods including 3D the proposed methods include 3D printing structures from mined lunar regolith or melting lunar soil to form bricks. Another possibility is compacting and shaping the soil to create protective structures. These are ambitious and creative ideas, but each approach faces significant drawbacks. NASA's plan, while giving engineers full control over the design and quality of the base, would require many launches to transport all of the components. This would lead to high costs and long timelines. China's approach would require delivering and operating extensive mining and processing equipment before any meaningful construction could begin. This would be extremely challenging without any initial temporary base to house crews and equipment safely during the early stages. And then there is SpaceX. As they've done many times before, they are offering a radically different and potentially game-changing concept. SpaceX's proposal is called Moon Base Alpha, and it revolves around using the Starship HLS, or Human Landing System, as the base itself. The idea is simple in theory, yet bold in execution. After landing on the moon, the Starship would then be repositioned from its vertical landing orientation into a horizontal position, where it would serve as a fully equipped lunar habitat. Naturally, the biggest question that comes to mind is how one could safely change the position of such a massive vehicle on the moon without heavy human intervention or specialized support systems. The proposed answer lies in an innovative concept known as the Astrostrom mechanism. Here is how it would work. First, lunar rovers would be deployed to prepare the site. They would clear the surrounding area and excavate a trench or hole large enough to accommodate the starship in its horizontal position. If a natural depression were found nearby, it could be used instead to save time. Next, an inflatable air cushion system would be placed near the landing legs of the starship, positioned toward the prepared trench. Once in place, the cushion would be inflated, creating a controlled slope. With the help of support systems, the starship HLS would then slowly and carefully tilt onto the cushion. The purpose of the system is to ensure the vehicle's movement is gradual and gentle, preventing any damage to the structure, equipment, or life support systems inside. Once the Starship is securely resting on the cushion, the air would be released, allowing the cushion to act as a stable lining. The vehicle would then settle fully onto the lunar surface. Finally, rovers would collect and pile lunar soil around the vehicle, forming a protective barrier against radiation, micrometeorites, and temperature extremes. At that point, the Starship would officially serve as the moon base. 
This method offers several clear advantages. It allows SpaceX to maximize the value and capabilities of the Starship HLS. Starship's size and internal volume make it capable of carrying enormous payloads, but that same pace can also be converted into a comfortable habitat for astronauts. Instead of discarding the vehicle after landing, as is often the case with space missions, this plan transforms it into a permanent and highly functional outpost. From a cost and efficiency standpoint, the benefits are equally compelling. Compared with NASA's multi-launch approach, this method would require fewer launches and eliminate the need to transport large pre-built structures from Earth. And unlike China's plan, it avoids the early requirement, requirement of mining and processing lunar materials before establishing a safe, livable base. By using the Starship HLS directly as the base, SpaceX's concept bypasses many of the logistical and engineering hurdles that other approaches face. It is an elegant solution that makes full use of hardware already designed for the mission, while also reducing both risk and expense. If successful, Moonbase Alpha could not only secure the U.S. a lead in the new moon race, but also lay the groundwork for long-term human presence beyond Earth. It would be a significant leap toward humanity's future as a spacefaring civilization. What do you think about SpaceX's idea? If you believe this is the right approach, leave a comment saying, let's do it. And remember to like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's remarkable journey. Not only does SpaceX's moon-based concept excel in terms of construction, but its design also gives it a significant advantage over completing, competing plans. The sheer size of Starship is once again at the forefront of this vision, offering more than enough room to create a versatile, functional, and comfortable habitat. At the start, the Starship Human Landing System, or HLS, is designed with a vertical living arrangement. Multiple floors are stacked within the nose section, optimized for launch and landing. However, once the Starship transitions to a horizontal position to become a base, the interior will be reconfigured accordingly. This will likely involve a flexible design where structural elements such as walls can be rotated or repurposed into floors and ceilings. In its standard configuration, Starship's habitable area is concentrated in the nose cone, while the rest of the vehicle is reserved for propellant tanks, engines, and related systems. Once converted into a base, the large internal volumes previously occupied by these systems could be stripped down and renovated to create additional living and working space. For the current V-1 Starship, repurposing these areas could potentially triple the available interior space. Later versions, such as V-3, could offer even more capacity. Naturally, such modifications would require significant support from specialized machines and autonomous robotic systems to handle the heavy work in a low-gravity environment. Inside the SpaceX moon base, the layout would follow a logical division of functions to ensure smooth operations and minimal interferences between different activities. One proposed concept features a six-floor arrangement, each dedicated to a specific role. The first floor would be the infrastructure hub containing the base's energy control center, water, and fuel systems, and a warehouse for essential equipment and tools to support exploration and maintenance. The second floor would be devoted to food production and storage. This area would not only serve to meet the crew's nutritional needs, but also provide a mental health boost, as gardening and food preparation have long been recognized as effective ways to reduce stress and maintain morale in isolated environments. The third floor would house hygiene and fitness facilities, special low-gravity toilets, compact showers, and advanced exercise equipment similar to those aboard the International Space Station will be included to help astronauts maintain both physical and mental health during long stays. The fourth floor would be the sleeping quarters. This space would be personalized for each crew member, giving them a private area for rest, communication with loved ones, and moments of solitude. The fifth floor would serve as the entertainment and leisure zone. Here, astronauts could read, work on personal projects, and enjoy views of the lunar surface through strategically placed windows. The sixth and final floor would be the dedicated research center, containing laboratories, specialized instruments, and the master control console for the entire base. Critical operations, system monitoring, and mission planning would all take place here. 
This floor would also serve as the meeting room for important discussions and decision making. If Starship's internal space is fully optimized, such a moon base could comfortably accommodate dozens of astronauts along with the necessary tools, scientific equipment, and life support infrastructure. This capacity is a clear advantage over the more limited and modular designs proposed by NASA and China. In addition to the internal systems, SpaceX's moon base could be enhanced with external features to improve its functionality and resilience. Solar panel arrays could be deployed around the base to generate power, especially vital for surviving the lunar night, which lasts roughly two weeks without sunlight. Robust life support systems, including oxygen generation units and thermal regulation systems, would ensure a stable and safe internal environment. A protective shield of compacted lunar regolith could then be layered over the base. This would provide crucial defense against micrometeorite impacts, debris, and harmful radiation. The choice to establish the base at the moon's south pole, where extreme conditions prevail, makes these protective measures all the more important. The south pole offers strategic advantages such as potential access to water ice, but its environment is much harsher than the relatively mild Apollo landing sites of the past. In any high-stakes competition, especially one as challenging as the modern moon race, breakthrough ideas can redefine the trajectory of success. SpaceX's approach, combining the multifunctional adaptability of Starship with efficient construction and expensive interior capacity, represents such a breakthrough. Once again, the innovative leap comes from SpaceX, the company that has consistently redefined the boundaries of modern space exploration. This concept not only bolsters the U.S.'s position in the lunar race, but also sets the stage for a new era of sustainable human presence beyond Earth. Before SpaceX can turn its moon base vision into reality, it must first meet the challenge of Artemis 3, the mission to return humans to the lunar surface for the first time since Apollo. A successful landing would give the U.S. a decisive advantage in the moon race, securing both prestige and influence. The exploration and discoveries from Artemis 3 will also provide the foundation for building a permanent lunar outpost in the years ahead. Yet, Starship's readiness for such a mission is still uncertain. Many critical milestones for a lunar landing remain unmet. The HLS variant has not yet been fully revealed, and the orbital refueling infrastructure, essential for the journey, has yet to be built. With only two years into the planned launch, the schedule is tight. Still, SpaceX and NASA project confidence. SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell has assured NASA's acting administrator Sean Duffy that Starship will be ready in time. Progress is visible. SpaceX has tested the crew elevator, shared early designs for living quarters, and revealed the airlock's real interior. NASA, after overcoming delays and skepticism, is also moving forward. Both the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft are advancing toward Artemis 2 II and 3, with Artemis 2 set to validate key systems during a crewed lunar flyby. For SpaceX, the year ahead will likely see three Starship test flights aimed at clearing earlier objectives. Next year, the plan calls for up to 25 flights, including the upgraded Starship V3 to boost reliability and mission capability. The moon race is shifting quickly, with permanent infrastructure now now a core objective. This is no longer about brief visits, but about creating lasting settlements to extend human civilization and prepare for deeper space missions. If SpaceX's Starship can serve as both transport and moon base, it could bypass many of the cost and complexity barriers faced by competing plans, potentially accelerating humanity's expansion beyond Earth. The outcome is uncertain, but the next few years will decide how the future of lunar presence unfolds. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly and the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.